Time will tell. Uh, we have a, another big one now against Wolves, a really difficult team to play against. They have shown against the top teams as well what they're capable of. And um, I know the preparation has been focused and, and understanding what we have to do tomorrow to win the game. Kai Havertz has now scored it in back-to-back -back games. And you spoke about the fact his confidence is growing. What have you been doing and the club been doing to, to get him to the level that you know he can perform at? First of all, support him like with any other player and then give him the, the tools. Uh, and the time to, to excel his qualities and I think that's what he's doing, everything has started to come together. A lot of things that he was doing right, he continues to do so and now obviously in front of goal, he's been very efficient. We understand the club are in talks with Takahiro and Ben White about extending their time at the club. Is that part of the, the wider strategy of trying to keep your key players, the nucleus together for the next three or four years and beyond? Yeah, that's what we've been doing in the last uh, few years, apart of strengthening the squad as well. And rewards and um, and have some stability in the squad and uh, those decisions are very important, obviously. And you come up against Wolves tomorrow. Gary O'Neill spoke on Monday and said that referees' decisions are affecting reputations and livelihoods. Do you have some sympathy with some of the decisions that have gone against Wolves this year? I have sympathy with all my colleagues uh, because I know how how beautiful at the same time how challenging our our job is and uh, and the exposure that we have and and those moments are in front of the cameras are not easy ones and and you see that in many 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 situations already this season and last season and uh, and yeah we're here to to make the, the game city obviously we played recently but at home and they have manchester city have a few injury concerns whereas arsenal feel like they're in a real good moment so Probably the ultimate test in, in the Premier League at the moment, and especially to go there with a with a weakened group as we will, and maybe not the numbers that we've we've had for for some of the other games will be a real real test for us. Okay, we're starting with Kai Havertz here. Um, controversial topic, I think divides hasn't convinced many people yet. I am not singing the song. <laughs> the best thing you about, love the song. You love the song. The best thing about him, let's be honest, before he scored two goals in two games was the song. That's not being brutal, that's just facts. Yeah, there was that penalty at Bournemouth, remember? And we thought, OK, maybe after that, this is the turning point. Uh, and that's, this is it. Mm -hmm. And they sang it that day, of course. But then it still took him a bit of time to go to that Brentford goal. And I think that psychologically, you see there was a, a few chances missed along the way. He's involved in that Martinelli goal, massive goal at the end of the City win, of course. But this is the one, I think, really. And then he went on to score against Lens three days later in the Champions League, but to win the game as a serve too, coming off the bench, I think was massive for his confidence, yeah. for the team. And what we saw against, against Lens in the build-up play from Arsenal, he's, he was playing a little bit higher up. Odegaard was dropping a little bit more next to Declan Rice. And I think that would suit him more. Don't get him too much involved in the build-up play. He doesn't need to be. However, he would have a better impact higher up on the pitch on, on the ball when, when Arsenal are in position, but also out of position. He's a very good presser of the ball. And if you look at his numbers, he's very good at recovering the ball in the yeah. last third of the pitch, for example. He's got that physical... Uh, he's quite strong. He's a tall guy. He's a strong guy. So he, he's, got, he's got that side in him. And I think that's what Arteta is trying to work on him a little bit more. Arsenal, are they better off than last season or what do you make of them? I mean, I know they're top of the table right now. There's just a different feel and I think the opinion is still divided. I'd like to hear yours. Um, I, I actually think they're stronger, to be honest. Um, some of the, the signings they've made over the summer, especially Declan Rice getting the captain of West Ham, I think that builds another level of character to, to the team, to the squad. And he's, his movement's infectious. His energy is infectious. Mm -hmm. his, the way he... he um, presents himself is infectious. All of the players around him have bought into him straight away. You know, you normally see a player take a little bit of time to, to kind of acclimatise himself to the way that the new manager wants him to, to operate. But he's just slotted in really, really well. He's got the trust of the players that he played with for the England national team. He, the, the other players as well, they believe in him because they've seen the quality firsthand. Players like him have stood out immediately. Kai Havertz, um, just very briefly, Confidence is a major thing yeah. from, from a forwards perspective. If you don't have confidence from your teammates, from your manager, you start doubting yourself. And we look, he's a good football player. Genuinely, he's a good football player. However, he just needs that confidence boost. Confidence boost, sorry. And that's what he's starting to get now. Two goals in two games and, you know, Arsenal top of the league. So he's going to have something in him that he's just believing in. You were talking about Gabriel and Saliba a little bit earlier on. In preparation for this, I was reading up, Saliba hasn't even got a yellow card this season. No. Isn't that 
Remarkable. It's hardly been dribbled. Yeah. So if, if nobody dribbles past you, you're not going to tackle really, you're not going to foul. <laughs> he leaves it to Gabriel, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as you know, he's my boy, so I'm, I'm completely biased here. I just think he's an incredible defender. And he's only 22 years old and he's going to get better and better. They see a couple of times where his positioning is slightly wrong. He makes up for it because he's so strong and, and so quick, but he will get better and better. And one of the best things that Arsenal did was to sign him to an extension mm. deal because he's there for the long, the long term, because he's going to become one of the best defenders in the world. From one goal-scoring and defensive side to the other, Wolves, the opponents today, we had an interesting chat off-air about mm. Wolves and their goal-scoring situation yeah. um, with Huang and um, Cunha. Cunha. Mm -hmm. Now, my question was, the two of them, since the Sheffield United defeat they've played up front, do Wolves still miss something? Do they still miss a traditional centre-forward? Yes. Yes, they do. Um, a player similar to Raul Jimenez in terms of the all-round player, but they miss the goal scorer, mm -hmm. an out-and-out -out goal scorer. Now, they're very good players and they like to... I think both of them's favourite position would be a, in, in a 10 position, just yeah. behind the number nine. But they don't have that, so they kind of have to rotate a little bit. Um, Pedro Neto, I think, is outrageously good. I don't, I'm not sure how long he's going to be there for, um, but... They, they need a goal scorer, an out-and-out -out goal scorer, and, and at, at the moment, they don't have it with those two guys. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Cunha, when he signed, I remember, I think it was here. He had scored three in 45, I think, for Atletico Madrid. Mm. I'm not saying that, he, you know, he can't score at all, and we saw, we saw him at the, the weekend, but it's just that's not him. Mm. He does a lot of other good things for a team, and the energy again, and the effort that he gives you, but not a, not a clinical goal scorer. Mm. Coming soon to a cinema near you. It's a new and improved Team Talks prediction time. Premier League predictions, 10 games to get through. Quick fire here. And here we go. Match week 14. We start, Jermaine, with yeah. Arsenal versus Wolves. Um, I think it's going to be an Arsenal 3-1 victory because Arsenal are unbelievable at the moment. They won't concede 2 in Arsenal. Next game is Brentford <laughs> versus Luton Town. Starting with you, Jules. Oh, with me, yeah. Brentford, Luton Town. Brentford at home. Uh, it's a tight game. One nil win for Brentford. I'm going to say two nil Brentford. So in agreement there. And Jules was saying <laughs> that he might copy your predictions. And I told you. <laughs> he just added a goal. Oh, I am. Come on. <laughs> it's a win. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys can elaborate a little bit more. Though. We're not being too tough on the time. So Burnley, Sheffield United, as mentioned, such a big game. Huge implications. What scoreline are we going to see? It's going to be a, a very interesting game at Turf Moor. I think um, Burnley desperately need a victory. They need to score a couple of goals as well. I hope Vincent Company does well there. So I'm going to say Vincent Company's team 2-1 victory. I mean, I know, I know I said the answer already on the show, but I would go 1-0 win for Burnley because they don't have that kind of firepower and I don't mm. think Sheffield either. And I can even tell you the goal scorer, it'd be Am Dooney. All Here's right, he's taking it up a level well here, giving us yeah, all scores. I'm Champions League, you know, this is the Premier League, Champions League. <laughs> wow! You've got to up your game I big time. We were cool. gonna, I'm going to give you another chance to do that. Because this is competition, no, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We need a referee here, VAR check is underway. Nottingham Forest versus Everton. Um, I'm thinking Everton, uh, Everton victory 3-2, just because Sean Dyche is going to keep his team really tight at the back and, and get on the offensive. That's the heart, the heart talking, you know. My head says a 1-1 one, one draw, which is not good for anybody, but... It's yeah. not, it doesn't help anyone. OK, and then finally, <laughs> for Saturday's games, Jules, let's start with you, is Newcastle and Manchester United. Well, I love this one. I really love this one. Uh, again, I think it would be a draw, a high-scoring draw, 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to say 3-2 Newcastle, just because St James's Park is a really difficult place to go and I, I really fancy Newcastle's side. Right, moving on to Sunday's games now. We've got Bournemouth against Villa, and I'll stick with you. Villa all day long. Um, and I'm going to say it's 3 0. Uh, Ollie Watkins, 2. Leon Bailey, 1. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's good. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I don't think that'd be that easy for Villa, the two Spanish managers against each other. I go for a Villa win, but now we're right, so 2 1 Villa. Oh, not goal scorers. You Still got three round. goals in it, though. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, win. Yeah, it's okay. okay, Chelsea are taking on Brighton. What are we going to see there? This is good. This is good because this will be open. So we see loads of goals. It's a 3-2 win for Chelsea and Cole Palmer will be among the goals. Scored. I completely concur. I agree 100%. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. But I, I, I can't disagree with him. I think um, Cole Palmer is going to score. He's been in scintillating yeah. form. 
uh, and Chelsea are just going to be a bit too strong. So scoreline, repeat for us. Uh, three two Chelsea. Oh, okay. okay. So, so. We'll start with you then. <laughs> Liverpool playing Fulham on Sunday. What's the score? It's going to wind up. Um, I think.